the big story of the day. Blake, Blake Wheeler, Wheeler and the captaincy. Did this catch you by surprise? So definitely, yeah, I was, I was definitely shocked. I didn't see it coming. Obviously a new coach is always gonna wanna make changes to a team, make it his team. Stripping you of the captaincy, why do you think he took the C away from you? I don't think it's fair to put that on him. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with him uh, personally, but I also don't think it's appropriate to maybe make it anything more than just it, it happened. I, I think that there was more that went into it than is public. I prefer to keep it between, you know, myself, uh, you know, Chevy and, and um, you know, Mark Chipman and leave it at that. You know, I think it's, yeah. And I absolutely respect that. Just trying to understand though, it was more of a, do you think, a franchise decision? I guess there were private conversations that had happened before that, just about what would be best for me, what would be best for the organization. And I think with, you know, my personal well-being, being a part of that conversation, the well-being of the organization, you know, kind of what's best for everyone. The captaincy wasn't necessarily a part of that, but I think that that went into some of those changes. Now that you look back on it, did that maybe spell the beginning of the end for you in Winnipeg? Well, it makes it easier to move on, right? Yeah. Um, I would definitely agree with that. I think last year was super challenging in the sense that, you know, there's a certain amount of I guess embarrassment that comes with, you know, having the sea taken away. To have to go through that and, and deal with that um, was definitely challenging at times. And, and I think, you know, a lot of the narrative around our group going into last year was that there was, you know, dressing room issues and there was problems and then you take the captaincy away. Well, there's your problem right there, right? It was sort um, of, did you say they sort of blaming it on you, the I, dressing room problems that we were hearing about? I think the timing of it certainly made it seem that way correct it, it, it kind of um it made it feel that way for sure so with that being said you know after we moved on from that last year was such a blessing for for me and the team in the sense that we got to kind of wipe the slate clean it was an opportunity for you know guys to kind of step up in a leadership role i had to grow as a person you know to kind of swallow that pill and invite guys into that leadership conversation as well and you know, I think my relationship with my teammates after last year grew a ton, kind of going through that together. So um, while it was tough going through it and it was sort of a bitter pill to swallow, like I wouldn't change it, you know, looking back on it, just knowing um, the conversations I had with my teammates after last year were, you know, I'll never forget, you know, what guys said to me, what we talked about. We're in such a good place, you know, as as friends now. Not that now that we're not teammates anymore. Yeah. You know, I got a room full of guys that you know talk to all the time, and just I'm cheering for, quite honestly. How would you describe what you learned about yourself having gone through all of that? Oh, we you don't have enough time. <laughs> you mean for this to be a therapy yeah, session? Yeah, no, exactly. But... <laughs> you, you don't have enough time for that, but a lot, I guess. Just um, I was able to, you know, kind of slow down and. Even as a 36 year old, I had some growing up to do and you, you can grow and you can be better and you know, I can lead um, better in and, and different ways and more effectively. And I don't know if I would have identified that had that not happened. There was a lot of kind of growing up that came from that moment. There was two ways to go with it, to be bitter and pissed off all year and you know, or uh, embrace it and make, make the most of that situation. And um, I feel like we did as a team. Overall thoughts, I'm so disappointed and disgusted right now. That's my thoughts. Their better players are so much better than ours. It's not even close. Anything else? Rick had an opportunity to address us as a team. He could have been honest with us. We could have had those discussions behind closed doors. So I didn't, I didn't agree with how he handled himself after that game. At that point, did you know, OK, that, that's got to be it. I can't come back to this team. No, I mean. Like when we left the ice in Vegas or after that game, you know, I didn't have the thought of like, that was my last game of the Jet. It, and it's also funny too, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of the guys said exactly what I said in their interviews after the season, you know. 
there, that was nothing against Bones. That was, that was, there was no issue there whatsoever. I think we were just maybe surprised that he said what he said after what had been said in the locker room right before that. That was all that was. Two on one, Shifley comes in, set up, beautiful play! So after so many years though, you know, being the captain and really the face of the franchise in Winnipeg, you were under the spotlight all the time, every day. Do you kind of like a bit more anonymity here? Yeah, I want to be careful with that because, you know, I have so much love and appreciation for the people and the fans in Winnipeg. And in my 12 years there, when things were great, when things weren't going great, I never had a, one single person come up to me in the street and say, hey, you didn't play hard last night, or hey, what's going on with the team? Like, I was treated so great by all the people all the time. With that being said, I will say that as my kids got older and more activities, every time you go out in public, people care. They love the yeah. team, they want to talk hockey, they want to talk about everything. It got heavy, you know, as the kids got older and more time in public, and you can't really pick who you're seeing and where you're going. Um, it got tough, for sure. Pass it works, hit home by Mark Scheifele! Both Connor yeah. and Mark Scheifele signing They're... seven year deals. Did that surprise you? Yes and no. Like, I think, I, you Seemed know. to surprise a lot of people. Well, I think just the timing of it, and there was not a whisper of it out there. You know, even sort of the little bit of dialogue I'd had with those guys kind of leading up to camp, it, you know, but seemed like it kind of came out of nowhere, whether that's the case or not. But like I said, it's so awesome for the fans there and for the team. And, you know, those two guys have earned the right to be lifelong Jets. So those are two guys, you know, that I'm so proud to say that, you know, um, I got to watch them grow up and, you know, being able to kind of watch their career, careers unfold is going to be awesome. So what do you think it's going to be like for you going back to Winnipeg, playing your old team for the first time as a member of the New York Rangers? I mean, it's at the end of a long road trip for us. Uh, so I hope the guys are rested and, and ready to take care of me. Um, but I think it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's going to hopefully tie a bow on just kind of everything and you know it'll be very strange i always love playing in that building um always will so um, anytime i get to lace them up there i, I look forward to it